What's up, SVSers? Welcome to another SVS audio file happy hour, a special edition, I might add, and not just because woo, we woo, have woo. our main chief engineer, Smith Freeman, on with us for uh, the second time, uh, but we're actually having a product launch episode today. So we'll get to that in a minute, but I'll go around and say hello to everyone. First, uh, to you, Gary, as I like to do. How are you this evening? Well, I couldn't be more stoked. This is our first virtual, purely virtual happy hour in quite a while, but we also have uh, a major product launch that we've, we've been uh, uh, talking about today. So it's exciting. Very exciting. Larry, uh, below me, how are you doing there, buddy? Uh, I'm doing okay. I've, uh, you know, been a under the weather as some of you guys saw yesterday. Larry, but, Larry got COVID and yeah. Larry's a sport. I think we're, he's still positive with COVID, right, Larry? I doubt it at this point, but uh, I, I lucked out. I know so many of you had so much trouble with this over the last few years, and uh, I, I came out okay. But you know, vaccinated, boosted, and all that stuff. So uh, it just happened to coincide with a sinus infection too. So it made it even more fun. But on the men, a fighter, you are a I'm fighter. Glad you're okay, Larry, and you're looking trim and, and leaner and meaner than I've seen in a long time. So yeah. so keep at it, and uh, you know I know you're going to. You're saying back illness and... agrees with Larry. No, no, I, I not at all. He even told me when I saw him in <laughs> Minneapolis last week, I stopped drinking Coke and I think I immediately lost like 12 pounds. So, yeah. So good for you on that. And uh, of course, we have uh, maybe not, of course, but Smith Freeman, our chief product designer, is here to geek out a little bit on Prime. How do you always Coke? make up new titles for Smith? That's Every not his title. Time. That's not even close to his title. <laughs> do you know your title? I'll take Smith? all of them. That's fine. And he is the master uh, of ordering at Sheets. This is not about go. titles. <laughs> But that doesn't mean we need to make stuff up. <laughs> well, Smith, well uh, is our, Smith is our senior director of product development. He leads all of the product design and development in, in, in FBS. That's such a better intro than what I did. So I apologize, <laughs> Smith, and, uh, and hopefully you'll forgive me there. Forgiven. All right, wonderful. All right, well... You know, I, I think uh, we're going to stick with the uh, the normal theme. And for those who might be tuning, uh, tuning in for the first time, um, we're going to do four giveaways tonight. Uh, to be eligible for these giveaways, all you have to do is leave a comment. If you leave multiple comments, that does not get you multiple entries. Uh, but we will announce the winners live on the air, get your information and get those products shipped out here. And uh, there might actually be some new products that we're giving away tonight. But uh, only Larry knows for sure. So Larry, only what do we got on tap tonight? Well, we've got four giveaways, uh, two of which we'll just kind of get out there now. We're doing a 3000 micro as our first prize, followed up by a pair of prime elevation. And then I think everybody's aware at this point, we're announcing some new product tonight and someone's going to win that new product. So you can say it, Larry. I think that's oh, can okay. I announce it? You so, may. Yeah. I've been saying it's the worst kept secret in yeah. the audio business, so you might so. as well say it. It's on our website. Can't tell. I'm, I'm a little website. excited for tonight. This is a product that I have been waiting for all of you to uh, get in front of you, and I'll tell stories later. But uh, we're announcing the Prime Wireless Pro family of products tonight, which includes a pair of speakers. So the Prime Wireless Pro powered bookshelf speakers. Someone is going to win tonight, along with Fun. the SoundBase Pro amplifier. So somebody's going to win a pair of the speakers and somebody's going to wear a, a win a SoundBase Pro amplifier with a pair of Prime bookshelves. So we've got some awesome and, and prizes tonight. Nick gave me permission to add, add uh, uh, an SB1000 Pro subwoofer. So that will be an amazing 2.1 oh, yeah. smart wireless um, assist setup. And, and we will include all the cables with that as well. Our SoundPath Ultra speaker cables and our SoundPath subwoofer cable. So that is a dynamite 2.1 system for whoever gets that in the uh, grand prize here at the end of the evening. Um, but of course, I want to stick with our tradition before we dive into some of the new products. Uh, you know, I've, it's been a while. I think the last few uh, broadcasts we did one was at Halston in Minnesota, which was just a phenomenal event. I have to give shout out to them. They truly rolled out the red carpet. Oh, man, um, great. They, they were literally drilling holes in their ceiling to be able to mount prime elevation speakers to allow us to do our Dolby Atmos setup. So uh, I would be remiss not to throw some love to, uh, to Mark at Halston and uh, the store manager over there who were just incredible uh, hosts. That was a and great sounding bunch of systems. Don't you think so, Nick? I mean, and Larry, those, they just really sounded great. Um, the store is well-designed. It's not, it's almost like being in an actual living room in terms of the sound. Yeah. The, ben and Mike and the whole team there were awesome to help us get out there. And that was after a crazy week of travel too. So it was nice to get in there and have all that additional support. Yep. And if you find and yourself, I think we have more than more than a couple hundred people there and it's just not, a, you know, a giant 
store. Um, it was really cool and lots of lots of uh, the what I would call the SVS community, right? Absolutely. It, it wasn't like a Nebraska furniture mart with this, which is just this, you know, several hundred thousand square foot retailer. It's it's a dedicated AV specialty store that has, you know, very nice uh, hi-fi system setups and big TVs. And, and it's all about home entertainment experiences in that store. So if you're in Minneapolis or around that area, you owe it to check out uh, Halston's Entertainment and uh, you won't be disappointed. They're, they're a great store and uh, we had a lot of fun there. So we'll be back for sure. Um, but with that said, I want to stick with tradition. And uh, Smith, I hope you prepared some uh, things that you've been listening to recently because I'm going to put you on the spot first as far as some content recommendations that maybe our community would be interested in. Uh, only because of Gary, I've actually been listening to the new Taylor Swift album. Well, you I probably stole the thing that never would have made it you into the, the rest rotation, of the world. But, yeah. but it is pretty good. <laughs> and so yeah, I've actually been enjoying that. And then um, Andor, actually, I was watching that on, on Disney Plus is actually fantastic. I thought it was, I think Andor is really shaping up to be a great show. It really is. It's a different feel for a Star Wars spinoff than, uh, than any of the others. Um, so I, I've gotten excited about it, too. And I'm almost done. So no spoilers, of course. Uh, Larry, I know you've uh, you've had some time in hotels here recently. What's uh, what's been on your watch list and listen list? Well, I got to go to a few concerts over the last few weeks. Um, my wife and I went to go see Collective Soul and Switchfoot, which was a great show. Switchfoot, I'd never seen and didn't know a ton about them, you know, other than their singles. Maybe one of the best live experiences we've ever had. Mm-hmm. And we got to see uh, the Pumpkins, the Smashing Pumpkins with uh, Jane's Addiction and a band called Poppy. And uh, Smashing Pumpkins were amazing. And I've always been told if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. And so that's where I'll leave it for Jane's addiction and Poppy. Um, but <laughs> with with Smith, I, I'm going to blame that totally on the sound engineers. The worst. Larry, we need you to be more opinionated. Oh you man, really do. Totally. can you just say what you I think? went in with an open mind? You guys know my opinions on. Oh no, mind, you didn't. But, uh, I did. I went in there wanting to enjoy it, but man, their sound. The you sound must have engineer, closed it right back up after you left. Uh, man, the Your sound mind, engineer I mean. for Jane's addiction was just awful. Everybody around us was complaining. They're like, "Man, that sounded bad." Um, so and it was the first night of the tour too. So I hope they fix it. <laughs> and now uh, you've got Perry Farrell got injured and had to pause the tour for a while. Um, Did you throw something at him? No I, <laughs> batteries. Uh, come on. I wanted to hear him. I really did. <laughs> um, and then uh, just been watching, like like Smith said, Andor. I uh, really enjoyed that. But Tony Gilroy, who wrote that, is doing a great job. Uh, we've been watching Cabinet of Curiosities too. So if you haven't checked that out on Netflix, if you like horror stuff. Uh, and Guillermo del Toro, who's one of my favorites. It's been good. How's the sound in that? I mean, Larry, is that good? Uh, the, that, that Guillermo I, I del Toro? Love, I, I enjoy everything he does. I kind of have a morbid He's sense cool. of things, so I, I'm enjoying it. And uh, finally finished Peacemaker during uh, the last few weeks and got my wife to watch it, too. So, Ooh, yeah, yeah that, that is not necessarily a family show. But hey, oh, no, not the kids, but <laughs> and I'm happy for James Gunn now that he's going to run DC, so. Very cool. Um, well, I will go last. So Gary, uh, why don't you share some uh, insights on, on recommendations for our folks? Well, I do. I am excited that some really uh, a lot of new music got released since the last uh, uh, show. And I'm, I'm abs- I think Taylor Swift's new album is just brilliant and he's setting all kinds of records with it. So I don't think we're the only ones who like it, Smith. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, but I also love the new uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers uh which is like again like 17 more songs so they've they've released 34 songs in like a six month space which is really remarkable and um if you're not into them too much you can capture why they're it's actually very well recorded rick rubin produced uh, a recording listen to eddie their tribute to eddie van halen it's it captures a lot of what's special about about uh, red hot chili peppers i think um that was really really good um I haven't really seen any. I'm I'm really interested to, in this Andor. Maybe I'll watch it because I haven't really seen any um, TV this or movies that have really interested me that much. I finally saw the Top Gun. Um, wow, you're like the last one. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. <laughs> but I, I but I do I loved it. I thought it was just a phenomenal demo. Larry, next in person thing. If there's a oh, we will if have a it. Disc. If, if I wasn't sick, I would have gone and purchased it yesterday and probably been blasting it in here. What a great demo. What a great demo. I, I, I loved it. So I hope we can show that to people uh, at our next in-person event, which is in 
Phoenix, right? That's right. Phoenix, December 7th, Wednesday, December 7th in the Phoenix yep. Scottsdale area at a, a yep. great deal of ours called Star Power. So uh, we'll have details on that here coming on the site and, uh, and elsewhere re uh, soon. So stay tuned for that. And you did some comedy shows too, right, Larry, uh, Gary? Or are those still on the... Uh, I, you know, that was it? really fun. I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I will. Um, we saw uh, Chris Rock at Constitution Hall. And I said to um, the team that day, we had a team call. And I said, I, he likes to make, record his specials at Constitution Hall. I think he's done at least one there. And sure enough, he, 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 he was filmed and he performed for two hours, which is... Double. It was exhausting, actually. Double the typical <laughs> comedy show because I think they were uh, trying to get the uh, the best hour of material for the special. So that was cool. And uh, then the next night, believe it or not, another comedy show. We saw um, Jerry Seinfeld in Baltimore, and um, I got to tell you all, and I I'm going to say this: that is maybe the best comedy show I've ever seen. That wow. was. He blew. He was just brilliant. Um, and he's touring, I guess, for the next couple of months. So if you get a chance to see it, I, 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 re I recommend it without reservation. It's really, really good. Interesting. Wow. I wouldn't have expected uh, that to uh, to be such a monumental. The guy's, uh, the, the guy's a billionaire. So he must have decided he had some really good material because he didn't <laughs> need the money. Mm -hmm. And um, And I'll tell you, he really, it was just brilliant. It was really, really good. Very cool. Well, I, uh, I think I mentioned this last time, but the Lord of the Rings, I finished it yesterday. And I mean, it is the most expensive show of all time. And I can see where a lot of that money went to. Uh, the sound is phenomenal. I think like the, the, the landscapes that they have like shot a lot of the video in and the special effects and the costumes, like you don't realize how much all of that can add up as far as cost, but it, it definitely sells it, you know, and I think it, it makes it more visually interesting. And I thought the sound was great. So I would recommend it. Um, I still like the movies better. I like the original trilogy and the Hobbit, but uh, it's definitely a, a story that keeps things going. And, uh, you know, I don't give away spoilers, but they, they left it at a nice little cliffhanger too. So um, about the you know, Amazon one. Yep. That's one on Amazon. Prime. I think it's great. I agree with you. Thirty mil, thirty-one million dollars per episode, which is just crazy. Yeah, but, they did a, uh, they did a really those. good job on that, and and I I'm going to say I think it's way better than the Game of Thrones prequel. I uh, I, I could completely agree with that. Um, I also went to the theater, and this is probably one that not a lot of our community has seen, but Lyle the Crocodile. I saw that in a theater <laughs> with my son because it was really rainy and we had nothing else to do. And wow, Sorry. that alligator can really sing, and that's a spoiler, but. Oh my goodness! So I'll, that's all. I'll leave it at that. But uh, maybe Did don't you really spend your just money. spoil that movie for everyone watching. No, it's a real jerk. <laughs> I'm sorry, all you Lyle the Crocodile fans. If you've ever read the books, then uh, you know it is what it is. But sorry about that. Uh, and then finally, I wanted to call out a uh, album anniversary that's actually today. And I, I'm guessing everyone here has got some sort of reaction to this. But the original first self-titled rage against the machine turns 30 years old today and as somebody who used to love mosh pits and have a lot of teenage angst like that was such a monumental record to hear just the amount of anger and the sort of fight the system and, and the just the the amount of uh energy that you could put into an album like that and, and it was just a sound i had never heard before so it's one of those albums that actually sort of turned me on to punk and, and harder uh, rock music in general, uh, just because of, of how great it was. So I'll open it up if anyone else wants to share their thoughts on the original Rage Against the Machine. But to me, it was just like a pivotal album release in my what life. What is the anniversary? Yeah. What is it? Uh, 30. 30 years? Yep. Yeah. They're self-titled uh, 30 years. And then just the album cover too. Like, oh my gosh, like it was just. But look, but look at uh, these interesting, um, you know, just to say these interesting albums that came out in 1992. I think uh, that one, I think, um, Nirvana's Nevermind came out then. I think Red Hot Chili Pepper, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic came out. I mean, these are pretty brilliant uh, uh, records um, all in the same year. I would totally kind of the beginning of like an era, right? Yeah. Nice nails. Yeah, 91, 92, up. Rock came back. It was a good time. Hey, listen to us. We sound like old people. 30 years ago, that, that's yeah. the part that strikes me as uh, hard crazy. to believe. But uh, I still listen to that album and it still gets me uh, riled up. So, um, all right. Well, let's do our first giveaway and then we can uh, dive into, uh, I think, what a lot of people are waiting to hear about our, uh, our new products. But our first giveaway of the evening is a 3000 micro subwoofer. And the winner of that is... Mr. Donald Kimes. Congratulations, Donald Kimes. Congratulations. Ooh, Michael Subwoofer. 
head in your way. Uh, we'll get your information, and get that shipped out. So, uh, Gary, I think I'm going to turn it over to you here. I have a, a couple pictures I'll pop up on screen here, but um, I'd love to just have a, a little sense of, of what sort of led up to this point today and this big launch. And, uh, and then we can kind of go from there and, and some of the things we want to talk about. Sure. Um, well, we are launching today. Finally, uh, my joke has been this the worst kept secret in the audio business. We've been talking about it for a year, but I, I do want to kind of get into that a little bit. But first, let me announce it. Prime Wireless Pro. It's our Prime Wireless Pro powered wireless speaker pair and our Prime Wireless Pro um, sound base integrated amplifier uh, source component. Um, and so it's a pair of powered speakers that can connect to your Wi-Fi. So what's the big deal? Well, you know, for what's really exciting to us is um, we feel like this this sort of category of products is dominated by um, kind of a me too mentality that the people who buy powered wireless speakers don't care about great sound. They just want background music. And we wanted to create something that creates magic, that creates really amazing sound. Um, and we, we work really hard at it. This is the second generation of, of our product of uh, Prime Wireless, but it's a massive, massive step forward. Um, they really create magic. We've been playing them all over, literally all over the world for uh, a year. We played them in Munich at Munich High End. We played them um, at CES and won the CES Innovations Award. We, um, We've shown them uh, uh, at audiophile shows like uh, Expona in Chicago and at consumer events. And everywhere we show them, we get just raves. And Smith can testify to this. It is the worst kept secret in the audio business in the sense that we've had prototypes that can, that can play them, uh, that we could play for people for a year, but we didn't release them. I think other audio brands might have thought about releasing them even a year ago at the level that they were at. But we worked so hard. Uh, I don't want to say we. Really, Smith and the product development team worked so hard to get this product perfect, nailed in terms of the sound quality. The user experience is just rock solid. It's fun to use. Um, and I'm just so excited. This is Larry says this is the most – this is the launch – how long have you been with us, Larry? A little over six, almost, yeah, six and a half years. Six and a half years. So you've been through some really exciting product launches with us, and you have said this is the one you're the most excited about. Anything you want to say about yeah. that? So, and Smith can attest. Uh, I've had one of the first prototypes. It's here on my desk for a little over a year now, I think. And uh, I remember bringing it home for the first time, and Smith got a text message from me about 45 seconds in, a minute into listening, saying, and I'm gonna gonna limit myself here, but I said, this is the best freaking thing you've ever made. Um, <laughs> and I sat there listening to it and <laughs> my fa my boys come in and go, man, what are you playing? And um, I'm so excited for this product. Some of you that I've interacted with at these events, you can hear those stories too, but I'm, you've all got that product where you bring something in and you bring your significant other, your wife, your husband, family, whatever, into the room. And they're like, Ugh, not again. And that's how my wife was the day I brought her into the room to hear this product. And I made her bring her phone so that she could play her own music. And uh, I said, okay, just start playing something on your phone. And she played a song from Pink and I showed her the airplay button and boom, man, the room just lit up. Her eyes got real big. She was smiling and sat there playing her own music for a while. I, you know, we've been together almost 21 years. Never seen her sit down and just listen to music until that day. So uh, she got a resounding, I want this in every room of the house. And I told Smith that too. So um, it's a product I'm more than excited for. Well, that, that's awesome. And I and I heard you tell that story before, Larry, and it still hits me because like, you know, I had the same reaction from uh, my my family my little one you know he actually stopped what he was doing i was playing mozart which you know mozart and he like Why? stopped what he was oh. doing and just starts <laughs> like listening and like he's six he doesn't stop doing what he's doing ever and he just stopped and started listening and, and like he's like i've never heard you know sound like like pianos like that sound the whole good and it was just so uh 
you know, rewarding to kind of have that, you know, stop and grab your attention. And Smith, I did want to ask you before we get in, we're going to talk a little bit about the specs and some of the, the new features that we have versus the previous version. But, um, you know, specifically with the powered speakers that we're looking at here, um, you know, what what's the difference between designing a, a product like this versus, say, just a typical passive speaker, you know, where you're going to connect it to an AV receiver and amplifier? Like, what are the upsides? What's the sort of challenges? Uh, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the the biggest thing is that this this product is a total ecosystem, right? It is an end to end solution. So whatever whatever flavor of of music or content you're going to put into it, whether it's through the HDMI or or through uh, streaming high resolution over Wi Fi or using AirPlay, um, basically our our challenge is let's get the best out of everything, however someone's going to put it into the product, and then we can develop the whole product all the way to the to the output of the speakers and so that gives us an opportunity to tune the amplifiers and tune the the crossovers in a digital domain and really study and, and look at every every nuance of the whole system we don't we're not really worried about you know like a passive speaker you don't know what amplifier they're going to use you don't know where the content's going to go um or where it's going to be coming from so in this in this case we really get to to drill into every aspect of the whole thing. You know, it's funny, I'm looking at the comments and somebody asked, are they four ohm, are they six ohm, are they eight ohm? And that would be a relevant question if they were passive full range speakers, but because you control every aspect of that, all, all you really need is your phone. You don't need to think about things like that because you've optimized the right. 450, there's four times 50 watt amplifier. So there's, there's literally a 50 watt amplifier on each, not on each, speaker, but on each driver in each speaker, so that you can then right. um, create, basically optimize every aspect of the performance of the speaker. Um, and those kinds of questions don't need, they're just not, they're not of concern, which is a departure. And, and, and the other piece of it is, if you want to create a truly audiophile experience, and you start with a pair of passive full range speakers, like, you know, our ultra bookshelves, wonderful speakers, but then you have to discuss, well, what amplifiers should they have? What source components should they have? What preamplifiers should they have if it's not an integrated? And, and all of a sudden, you're you're not just taking a pair of speakers that cost you know a little more than a thousand dollars. You're also having to invest in an amplifier of of of, of uh, corresponding quality, a preamplifier maybe, a source component maybe. It's a you know those all those different things. With these speakers. All you need is your phone as the um, departure point, and you can create a truly high-end audiophile experience, which is something, in my opinion, completely new. I think you mentioned this uh, at the beginning, uh, Gary, but the, the active crossover... I mean, one of the pieces of feedback that we have gotten about this product everywhere we've gone is that they just sound so much bigger than what the cabinet volume would would make you think um, in terms of output and low frequency extension. And Smith, I'm curious if there's a sort of maybe not overly technical, but but what exactly about designing the crossover and, and voicing the speaker uh, allowed you to achieve that? Like, what's that process like? I mean, the the tuning process is actually not that different than tuning a, a passive speaker, but the, the the tools that I have to work with are totally different. So me and the team, you know, in a passive speaker, you're basically just choosing resistors and inductors and capacitors to build a pack, what's called a passive crossover. In this case, everything is happening in the digital domain. We're not having to sort through components and, and narrow down tolerances and, and all the aspects of these passive components. We do everything basically on the computer and we can fine tune every detail like down to the microscopic level we do it in real time every part of the yeah we do it in real time and so we're sitting in it, a room uh, together and i'm in us. there with you with with you and, and and we're talking about what we're listening to and you can make an adjustment right then and there and we can listen yep. to what we did in real time which you cannot do with a passive full range speaker you have to get up you have to do some new component in there a resistor an inductor something um, that uh, delays it and, and um, doesn't allow you to really move quickly like we can uh, in working with a digital electronic crossover, right? That's right. 
So I think we've gotten very specific about the crossover and the amplifier, but Larry, I'd love for you to just give a general frame up of, uh, of the prime wireless pro powered speakers here in terms of just uh, some, some specs that people might be interested in and, and what the benefit of those uh, are. And, uh, and then we can talk a little bit about how they're different from the first version. Yeah, absolutely. So I see a lot of questions coming in just general. So what you're looking at is the prime wireless pro pair. Uh, and so the speaker on the right, Inside that speaker, there are four 50 watt class D digital amplifiers. There's one for each of the four drivers between the two speakers. And on the back, you have HDMI 2.1 with eARC. You can see that front panel display, which we'll get into in a minute as well. Optical, analog left and right, an active subwoofer out, Wi Fi, Bluetooth 5.0 with Aptex, uh, high res streaming over Wi Fi or an Ethernet connection using the new and updated DTS PlayFi. But you can also use AirPlay or Chromecast 2, which, uh, or Chromecast, sorry, AirPlay 2 or Chromecast, which makes it really easy for everybody in your family to use. You simply open up your phone, start playing something, and boom, choose the speaker. Uh, the way I'm using this product currently is I've got a 43 inch TV here that I use as a monitor, and I have my laptop connected to it with HDMI. And then from the ARC output, the eARC output of the TV, that goes directly to the speakers. So everything I'm listening to comes out from there. We've also included a remote, which has disappeared off my desk somewhere. Uh, so we have an IR remote, which was not on the previous model. Yeah, and Smith is holding it there too. And the front panel display is yeah. awesome. As you can see where it shows AirPlay, it will actually show you the name of the artist, the sound of the song from the artist, whatever input you're on, and then those six buttons are presets. So think of your car radio when you're driving around town. You have six local FM or AM presets you can listen to. Well, these can be presets that you save from really anywhere in the world. Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, Kobas, Amazon Music, uh, Sirius Sirius Satellite Radio, whatever. And you don't have to be tethered to your phone to use. And the way you, you typically use this is whatever you're listening to off your phone, or if you've got music stored on a computer on your network, you can access that too. But with the presets, you simply save a preset when you come home and you want to listen to whatever you're listening to, you hit the button and 10 seconds later, you're streaming. Yeah, so it's great it's, for near field, for sure. Absolutely, yeah. And you can use them as computer speakers, a soundbar alternative, uh, every room, because it is multi-room as well. So I just, I'm and excited are, for this product, so... People are asking, um, how do you, how do they um, input to them and how do you control them? So just to get circle back to the basics. It's a great segue. I was going to follow up and ask you, Gary, and, and to talk about the real value of Chromecast and AirPlay too, because I'm not sure that people yeah. really understand what that's all about. Well, I, and the first, but the first thing I want to talk about is high res over Wi-Fi, because I think that is, um, I, I don't want to name other brands. Um, we're not about that. We don't we criticize other brands. Only one other brand that I'm aware of in any, you know, normal amount of circulation uh, in our, in the U S um, is capable of high res over Wi-Fi, and our, our uh, prime wireless pro is capable of high res over Wi-Fi. And um, I'll just, can I tell a really quick story? I thought you, you said everybody has to have a story and I couldn't think of one, but then it just occurred to me that uh, when this Taylor Swift uh, album came out, I was, I was playing, I said to my wife, you know, it's really good. He's not that much of a Taylor Swift fan. Weirdly, I'm the one that is. Um, and she said, let me play it. So she, the um, Bluetooth connected the Prime Wireless Pro and started playing the album. And I said, you know, you ought to hear this in high res. And she kind of gave me this eye roll and said, what's the point? I, I'm not going to hear the difference. You hear the difference. You do this for a living. And I said, why don't we just for fun, let's see if you can tell. And we play, we switched over to uh, what was a sense from what was essentially CD quality was actually Spotify connect to um, high res. And it was obvious to her, not, not me. It was obvious to her that um, the sound was dramatically better. And that was a moment. She's like, can I get that app? I have Cobus. She's like, can I get that app? I want to listen in high res. It was kind of a cool moment. And that is one of the benefits of having high res over Wi-Fi. So you get high res over Wi-Fi using our PlayFi app. But if you don't want to learn a new app, um, then you can 
use AirPlay 2, which is essentially CD quality only with the ease of use of a Bluetooth, or if you have an Android phone, Chromecast or Google Cast, which is essentially the ease of use of Bluetooth using an Android phone. And, and um, we also have a remote control because people are asking, is there a remote control? Yes, there's a, an infrared remote control that allows you to uh, choose the preset you want, turn the volume up and down, choose the source you want. So it's, lot, it's basically a combination of ease of use and uncompromised, convincing, immersive sound. To me, that's a, a magic, magical combination. I totally agree. And, and I think, you know, with Chromecast and uh, AirPlay 2 specifically, it provides you that sort of nice bridge. I mean, not everyone wants to learn a new app, and this allows right. you to just directly connect to the products and still get that CD quality, uh, you know, high-res audio experience uh, without compromise. I mean, I think we all, it's no secret that Bluetooth really is compressed. And while, yes, it's simple, you're just compromising on so much sound quality uh, that, it's nice to have, but it's certainly not what anyone who's doing critical listening or who wants to hear the full fidelity of their favorite music is going to opt for. So uh, I feel like that's one of the uh, the biggest uh, upgrades that have uh, been made since the previous version is just that ability to, to connect directly with the uh, Chromecast and AirPlay 2. And I think a lot of people may not even know they have that just natively built into their phones. Uh, and well, you if you have an iPhone, if you have an iPhone, you have AirPlay 2. And if you have an Android phone, you have Chromecast. Um, and it's not, it just becomes, it automatically becomes a client for your phone. So there's nothing new to do, nothing to learn. You just choose the speakers. You're going to name them in the installation process. So if you call them uh, white office speakers, for example, if you were looking at these, then you'll see that as a choice on anything that has an audio output on your phone. Um, and so if you don't want to learn a new, I, I, I've always, my theory about PlayFi, some people criticize PlayFi. Um, I love PlayFi. I have no problem with it. But um, I think the really big objection to PlayFi is if I already know how to play Spotify, why do I need to learn a new app to listen to Spotify? I get that. And so this allows you to not have to do that if you don't want to. So this is actually an interesting question that came in from uh, Robert E. And he's asking, how does he know he's listening to a high res file? Like if you're connecting via Chromecast or AirPlay or even the PlayFi app, like what is there to tell you that you're actually listening in high res? Uh, and Larry, maybe this is a good one for you since I know you've worked with all of these services. Yeah. Um, so if you're using AirPlay or Chromecast, you're not listening to high res. That's just the easiest way to go. You about are it. getting CD you. quality just for the CD record. It's still better than Bluetooth. Yeah, so the way we kind of look at the hierarchy, we, we want you doing high res either, either over your Wi-Fi network or an Ethernet wired connection using the DTS PlayFi app. And if you've never played with PlayFi, uh, it's, it's like a gateway. And that's what allows you to do multi-room, multi-zone as well. And you can do that with AirPlay and Chromecast too. But you have a little bit more control and flexibility with PlayFi. And PlayFi is kind of like, think of it as an umbrella. Under PlayFi, you have Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, Kobas, all these other apps, and you open it inside that ecosystem. And that's where you have the ability to play high res. So if you have Kobas, they have high res streaming file, and you turn on what's called critical listening in the PlayFi app, and that allows you to stream the high res files from those streaming services so you can listen to those fully uncompressed 24 bit, 192 kilohertz files and hear them in, you know, the near studio quality sound. But if you're someone in your family that doesn't, you know, the kids want to just listen to whatever or family member just wants to listen, that's where AirPlay comes in. So your, your high-res streaming is going to come from PlayFi, and that will be the best fidelity that you can get over streaming. Then you'll have your AirPlay 2 and Chromecast, and then eventually Bluetooth. And Bluetooth is something that, you know, you all have the ability to bypass Bluetooth now from your phones and your tablets. Um and it just makes life easier too. It sounds better. Well, that, so no you, question. You should about that. We should give away a pair of um, Prime Wireless Pro speakers now. And then, Larry, you should talk about, or Smith, either one of you guys, talk, talk, talk about the HDMI connectivity because yeah. that's one of the other cool factors I want to make sure everybody knows about. Well, you're bumping up our, our Prime Wireless Pro giveaway. I was I have elevations I'm to sorry, give away. Did too, I mess so up? That's okay. No, you didn't. I we can give away. I'm sure nobody's going to complain about winning either one. Uh, but I do have a pair of Prime elevations. I'd love to to find their way to a happy home. And the winner of those is 
Soundman 617, maybe from Massachusetts, having been there. I know that's a Massachusetts area code, but Soundman 617. Uh, if we can't find your info, drop us a note through our customer service. We'll make sure we get those pair of prime elevation speakers. And Gary, I promise the next one will be our right, I'm wireless sorry. pro. That's okay. So <laughs> I think we, we kind of led you into it, Smith, but the uh, one of the other massive upgrades since the uh, first iteration of our prime wireless products was HDMI with ARC and eARC. So maybe talk about what that means for this uh, this series of products and, and uh, how people can enjoy it. Yeah, it, adding adding HDMI was a was a natural thing to do. It was kind of a must. It's it's uh, it's the way everything's going. The TV is becoming kind of the central hub of of all the content, and so adding HDMI was just a a, a, a must. But basically, almost every TV built recently has what's either ARC audio return channel or eARC, which is the newer flavor of, of ARC. Um, on one of the HDMI jacks on your TV. That is a two-directional jack. So you can use it as an input or you can use it for ARC and send it to these products. And then the TV through what's called CEC or sometimes the brands have uh, other, other names for it, basically can communicate through that HDMI jack back to our product, including sending all the audio. So it can really, it, it's really, it's a way a lot of sound bars operate and, uh, I would say this is definitely a better solution. And uh, Larry, maybe, or, or whoever can take this one, uh, maybe not apples to apples, but is HDMI audio in what would be considered high res? Like, is there any compression? Is there anything that you're losing by uh, by sending your audio via HDMI? Well, it, it's more of really what you're watching. So if you're, like for me, sitting here on the desk and I see people commenting about a sound bar, that's what Smith was just talking about. If you're watching, you know, and or on Disney Plus, obviously this isn't an Atmos surround sound system, but it's going to come out in digital audio. Uh, but if you're streaming, say, Tidal HD on your television, if you have that ability, it's also just going to come out in digital audio. So you're not necessarily getting like high res, but um, it's going to be the highest fidelity that that particular source allows. Yep, there, there is no downsampling with HDMI. It's just basically what you're what you're feeding to it. Yeah. And I, I think so, one of the so there's cooler... some good questions here. One person asked, is HDMI better than using the fiber output? And I think that's a really good question because we had fiber input on our first gen prime wireless. Um, and the problem is that not everything um, is, um, uh, you, you, it, it basically down samples it to make it work over fiber. When you have HDMI, you're going to get the full resolution that that's there in the content. If you're streaming Netflix, or if you're streaming, uh, 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 or watching a a, a, um, a a Dolby Digital show on on network, you're going to get the full resolution of that. You won't get all the channels. You'll get stereo, and you'll get uh, subwoofer output if you want to use that. It's going to sound better than pretty much any soundbar, but it won't necessarily have the surround sound aspect. But it'll still It'll, it'll make your TV sound almost like a home theater. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that our uh, SoundPath Ultra HDMI cables will handle ARC and eARC and up to 8K. So uh, what you're seeing there is a perfect complement if you're going to be connecting a pair of Prime Wireless Pro powered speakers to your television. So uh, good job, um, Nick. Just a little heads up. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, and somebody was asking about tell, You know what? I think we didn't, we never said... If you comment, that enters you for the prizes. Maybe we should have said I that. did say that at the beginning, but I'll remind people. I All you need to do is one comment, comment, ask a question, anything you can, uh, anything you have for thoughts about the product or just a question, throw it up there and we, we choose at random. So uh, that's all you have to do to be eligible. Well, I feel like what we haven't talked about here is the other member of the uh, SVS Prime Wireless Pro uh, family. And uh, that would be our, our sound, our pro sound base. And uh, I'll pop this up here. And Larry did such a good job with the... Uh, the speakers. Why don't you give us a little uh, insights on what we're uh, seeing here in this picture? So this is the Soundbase Pro, which has a very similar story to the Prime Wireless Pro speakers, but here you supply the speakers, whether it's ours, some you already have, and now you can make them smart. And what you have inside this amplifier is all the same features, but this is a 300 watt two-channel amplifier, Class D, so it's 150 watts by two. It's enough juice to really power anything you want to throw at it. Uh, but it's not just an amplifier, it's also a streamer, meaning you can hook it up to an existing system maybe you have 
that you would like to do multi-room, multi-zone with, or make AirPlay compatible. And you can do that because on the back of the amplifier, there's also analog outputs to hook it up just like a source component. Uh, you have regular speaker line outputs, the left and right audio output. You also have analog input, uh, subwoofer output, the HDMI 2.1 with eARC, the remote, the front panel display, the presets. And it's kind of hard to see in that image, but there's also a headphone jack on there too. So this is a really awesome, just fantastic two-channel uh, amplifier solution here. Um, also has HDMI. Um, just because I'm yes. seeing in the comments, people are asking. Yes, yeah, so, it, can, it can also take uh, output from your TV yep. and create a soundbar killer. Yeah, so the, these things are, I mean, if you think about soundbars, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have soundbars. You don't use them for anything other than when you're watching television. And I think that's one of the big perks of these two products is not only are you going to use it when you're watching TV, but also anytime you just feel like listening to music or you know some talk radio or whatever, you can absolutely do that with just a touch of a button or open up your phone with AirPlay or Chromecast. So just for anyone who might be tuning in, uh, we have Smith Freeman here, who's uh, our, I already yeah, forgot. People are asking title. who Smith is. We better get Smith some airtime. <laughs> yeah, uh, so he he is one of the uh, luminaries behind the design of Prime Wireless Pro and all SVS products, really. Um, and I'm curious, I mean, this is this is our second iteration of, uh, of wireless products, but this is our, our first source component that we've ever really made. So I'm, I'm curious what your thought process was going into this and, and if there's sort of a, you know, a different skill set that you needed to employ or, or just um, what the challenges were with, with bringing this pro sound base to uh, life. Yeah, well, a lot of the stuff that we have to do in the speakers, we also have to do, we have to do well in the speakers, we also have to do well in the sound base. So and that and that's really making sure that we have, we're paying close attention to all the inputs, their signal flow going through the product, and the quality of the amplifiers that we're using. So we're we're actually using very high quality Class D amplifiers. So when they when Larry says it's 150 watts by two, it's 150 watts RMS into four ohms. So what that basically means is this is a, a very high quality, high power amplifier that'll have an, a very easy time driving pretty much any any set of speakers. So any of our speakers will work great with it. Any other speakers that you have will, will easily be driven by this amplifier. Um, and so a lot, of the, but the work there to tune the amplifiers and tune the system for that, it's a, it's a little bit more binary, right? It's, it's just making sure that the signal flow is clean, that we're giving everything enough uh, uh, headroom, um, and uh, and just making sure that we're resulting in a clean output all, all the way through. You may have mentioned this, Larry, but uh, I feel like we have to address this. We are SVS. Both models do absolutely <laughs> have subwoofer outputs. And uh, on the, the speaker specifically, uh, Smith, we employ a high-pass filter. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. There's an 80 hertz high-pass filter applied to the speakers. So it's full range going out to the subwoofer. You would then tune the subwoofer to match match the speakers. And what about the sound base pro? Is there uh, any filtering going on there with the subwoofer out? No, all all those outputs are full. The question range. is, do they so have subwoofer output? I think we need to answer that. <laughs> and that, yes, yeah. they both they, have they subwoofer both have output. Subwoofer outputs. It would be a crime if they didn't. That's that's absolutely true. Um, so I, I I did want to mention that they're I asking have, uh, pricing. You know, normally we you know we're not this is not really supposed to be an infomercial, but I, people are very curious about the price, so I think we should stay. Um, the Prime Wireless Pro. Speaker pair, so po a powered pair of speakers is eight ninety nine for the pair, and um, they're being compared favorably with. We're not going to name specifics, but they're being compared favorably with um, some powered speakers that cost three times as much and have, have gotten um, a lot of attention. And we'll leave it at that. And uh, the uh, Prime Wireless Pro sound base is six ninety nine, and as as Smith says enough power and uh, ability to drive pretty much any load to, dr to drive any speakers. Um, and it's also really nice as a source component in a two channel system or a home theater that is not smart and wireless. So it becomes, it basically turns your legacy two channel system, for example, into a smart wireless zone. So I do have to share one uh, personal anecdote because I had some uh, some speakers that uh, a pair of these that were uh, some of the originals and I gave them to my son who went off to college and he could only send a picture of the uh, passive one because I guess his roommate's side of the room is really, really dirty in his dorm. So he didn't want to reveal anything there. But it's funny, like people of his age, he's uh, he's 18. They don't 
really understand what great sound is. And he's got a pair of uh, the Prime Wireless Pro Power bookshelves. He's got a 3000 micro in his room. And he literally had 30 people in there uh, at one point, which may or may not have gotten him into a little bit of hot water. Fortunately, it didn't affect his tuition. But um, it's just amazing. Like, he, you know, he's putting on things that he listens to and, and like Kid Cudi and, and other uh, artists that I think uh, you know, maybe people haven't heard before. And he said it's just sort of like an eye opener for them. And, and he's had multiple people try to buy them. And so, Eli, if you're watching, tell them they can buy them now off our website. And uh, it's just really rewarding because, you know, I, I think younger people understanding what great sound is, it begins their journey to hi-fi. And I think a lot of what this product is about, it's it's great if you're a seasoned audiophile because it does everything that somebody who can truly appreciate critical listening looks for. But it also is such an eye-opening experience for somebody who maybe have never even heard our true hi-fi system to experience what deep bass that can actually like thump your chest or you know pristine clarity. Some of these really audio file type terms that uh, that I don't think you understand until you experience them for real. So uh, Eli, thank you for sending the pictures. Looks like you got a few uh, fingerprints on there. You got to polish off, but it is your dorm room, and I like to see that your plant still alive too. So sorry about the editorial there, but. Uh, I'm just proud uh, that the next generation is uh, is is growing this hobby and, and doing their part. Um, now I think we're ready for our next uh, giveaway, Gary, if that's cool with you. Great. Uh, I'm excited. Let's see. Give me a second. So the winner of the first ever giveaway of our Prime Wireless Pro powered speaker pair is Randy Johnson. Congratulations, Randy Ooh, Johnson. Awesome. Congratulations. I've your name pop up. Yay, before, Randy. So a loyal listener and i'm uh, glad to see that you were able to take those home with you uh all right so there's a i think the uh the sound base we talked about a little bit we talked about some of the connectivity options now i kind of wanted to get into some of the philosophical things around the design of this product um and specifically you know how we voice them and, and sort of the process that you went through smith and so i'm curious just from a music standpoint like what kind of content are you listening for uh or choosing and how does that whole process unfold you know from the prototypes you're using on a computer to actually bringing these products to life i mean this, this is a process i do pretty heavily with with the rest of the product team and with gary um I, you know gary's had a, a big Im impact on just what what we include in the voicing process so that there can be a clear dialogue between what he hears and what I hear. But basically a lot of it comes down to making sure that we're covering the full range of types of content. You don't want to make a speaker that's only good for jazz because nobody listens to just jazz and everybody listens to everything. So it's a lot of male vocal. It's a lot of female vocal. It is some jazz. It's some piano, it's some classical. It's also some hard rock. It's some electronic music. Um, it's some, it's some very quiet, delicate stuff and it's some big, loud, boisterous stuff. So you kind of have to make a speaker that is going to be, um, kind of neutral to whatever you're going to ask it to, to perform because that's what it needs to do. It just needs to be a, a neutral participant to bring the content to you as, as honestly and authentically as possible. So some of the content that we use when we get really into the, to the deep nuanced parts of, of voicing. Bob Dylan's Man Along Black Coat. We use this a ton. That track will literally give me a panic attack, panic attack if it just comes <laughs> on casually. Because I just, I, there's no pleasure in that You've heard it anymore, one million times. You don't have to necessarily like but, the music. Yeah, it just it has to work. <laughs> no, but, but it no, is interesting what, what we do because like we're, we're going back and forth between Nora Jones and Bob Dylan, two completely different uh, 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 timbre totally of, of the human voice. And Miranda Lambert, we have one of her. We have, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, but nine inch you nails, make it nine inch nails, absolutely, and perfect circle. Um, but then we we uh, we make an adjustment based on we something that we hear with one source, and then we have to go and see what did we do to the other one because exactly what Smith yeah. said. We want to make sure that yeah. we're delivering a satisfying experience with every kind of of uh, music and content. Yeah, every every little tweak and adjustment can't be done in a in a vacuum. You can't just make one change and assume that was for the greater good of everything. You really kind of have to go back and revisit to make sure that you're making global corrections. Um, and so that's it's a the the first ninety ninety five percent of speaker voicing is very objective. It does this measure well, you know, in in all the different ways that you measure a speaker. But then that last five percent 
is totally subjective. And so that's where we're moving speakers in and out of listening rooms and measurement chambers to make all those little adjustments and keep revisiting that we're, we're making that iterative progress forward, which can yeah. make Bob Dylan really painful. <laughs> well, I assume we were doing some cinematic content too, you know, with the, the HDMI as well. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole separate set of challenges with that, um, you know, in, in terms of the imaging and some of the, uh, the challenges that it creates. And, and uh, you know, I, I have them hooked the up. The dynamics and excitement. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have a, a sound base hooked up and, and I saw a couple of comments asking about the um, status of my current home theater. And it's, it's kind of sad. I have a TV now. I have my sound, my pro sound base with a pair of ultra bookshelves on like a card table and I'm waiting for some furniture and I'm waiting for some other things. So it's just not very aspirational. I almost was going to share a picture, but I was like, eh, I'll wait till I have something that looks a little better, but it's coming along. We're just waiting on some things that are back ordered. And uh, I'm hoping by Thanksgiving, I'm going to be able to have the family over and really unleash it. But uh, yeah, I got you so beat training I did in Miami two weeks ago. We brought on a new retailer in South Florida and did a training and my rear speaker stands were the boxes from Prime Pinnacle. Oh, now that's classy right there. Those are good boxes though. Yes, they yeah. are. They're very sturdy. So, I've also seen a couple of questions here about the uh, multi-room uh, sort of whole home aspect of these. And I think this this sort of two different flavors with what you can do with sound base, uh, pro sound base, as well as the bookshelf speakers. And Larry, I know you do a good job explaining this. So uh, what is that all about and how can people use this in, in terms of multi-room? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll put it in the same category. A lot of you are familiar with the multi-room audio solutions out there from, say, like Sonos. And I, I don't want to say this is like a Sonos, but it's in that same category where you can put this product all over your home. And you can have them on your desk as your computer speaker. You can put them in a bedroom. You can put them in a kitchen. Uh, you can mix the amplifiers, the Soundbase Pro and the uh, Prime Wireless Pro bookshelves. And then you name them. So you have like office, bedroom, living room, kitchen, dining, whatever. And either via AirPlay 2 or Chromecast or using the DTS PlayFi app, uh, control them, each room what you consider a zone. And that would allow you to either play the same thing in all rooms or multiple things in multiple rooms and have everyone in your house have control over their own listening habits. With the Soundbase Pro being an amplifier, there's a lot of people that build homes and they'll have a closet where they will put their amplifiers to power maybe outdoor speakers and kitchen, in ceiling, in wall speakers, things like that. And you can do that same thing with the Soundbase and have it all in a controlled location. And uh, it, it's great for that. The, the multi-room application. You can have multiple sound bases. Yes. So you can in put a, like in a single, in a single point. Yeah. yeah and that, that's, and, that's actually what I've done in my setup. I have a multiple sound bases at a, what you call the head end where all the speaker wires end up and they run speakers all around my house and I can control them because it's, it's Wi-Fi based as long as everything is within reach of the Wi-Fi, which is really easy to do these days with, Nest type of uh, routers. Thanks to you, Larry, I got a Nest router early on. Um, it's a really great seamless experience. And I think one thing that sets uh, DTS PlayFi, which is what we use as essentially as the multi-room, what sets it apart from the other products in this category is that you can mix and match brands. And that's actually really cool to be able to do. So maybe in your living room, you have a Pioneer or Onkyo or Macintosh receiver and then in your bedroom, you have a pair of Prime Wireless Pro. And then in your office, you have a Soundbase Pro with a pair of bookshelf speakers. They'll all talk to each other. And that's really awesome. So you can be having a Super Bowl party and have the game coming from the main listening room and broadcast that throughout the rest of the house, too. So my lights keep flickering. I think my wife's listening to Rage Against the Machine or something up there because I feel <laughs> some thumping and my lights keep going. Nee, nah, nah, nah. So uh, maybe I need some power conditioning. Maybe Eli came home from school. Oh, yeah, that's going to be soon enough. Uh, I'll, I think there's one big thing we missed about the Prime Wireless Pro powered speakers, and that is the the cabinet and the drivers. Uh, you know, well, I, I saw asking people if they have more bass than the first gen. Maybe, Smith, that's a good one for you to talk about. Um, we did want to make them have uh, uh, a fuller range of sound and not need a subwoofer. Um, uh, so, Smith, why don't you speak to that? Yeah, Everybody when, wants to hear from you, Smith. The... I think you need to come on future shows. Everybody... <laughs> When we, when we started this project, it was like a totally different world when we started this project. But when we started this project, there were, there were definitely a few things that were a must. Like we got to bring a remote. We got to get the, uh, 
the the new electronics so and get airplay too and get cast and um and bring hdmi on board one of the other big musts was let's we we got to make the speakers bigger we got to put in a bigger woofer bigger cabinet deeper tuning get higher output lower uh frequency extension and so that was that was kind of job one and the the five the five and a quarter inch woofer that we use in the primer house pro speakers is a completely ground up new driver we developed it specifically for this project um and so i mean if you were to look at it side by side with with the previous generation it's it's a completely different animal um so that is it's a it's a fantastic driver that really allows us to pull more from the electronics pull more from the amplifier and deliver you know deeper bass higher louder output um and the the team that we've that we've built to to develop these products um here at svs like the work that they've done to really push the envelope and what the electronics can do are just it's amazing so no, I, couldn't, a, I couldn't be prouder of, of what we've accomplished i totally agree and i didn't mean to speak over you um there's a question about whether we can you can turn them on or off can you please uh smith um because they don't have a on off switch because we want them to be waiting there uh, on the Wi-Fi network for whenever you want to use them. But I don't want people to feel like they're left on all the time. Can you please explain what goes on when they, how they go into that uh, kind of hibernation mode uh, so that they're not consuming yeah. power? Yeah, there, there is a standby mode. And standby mode. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, you don't have to do anything for that to happen. If you, if nothing's happening to the product after, I think it's uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes, something like that, they basically will, will just kind of drop down into the standby state. Now that standby state means that they're still available on the network. So if you have Spotify and you pull up Spotify Connect, you'll still see it immediately there. So you can immediately wake it up. It'll come right out of standby and start playing music right away. Um, and that's and that's really on purpose, right? We didn't this these pro this kind of category of product. You don't want to just keep going back and switching it off and switching it back on every time you, you use it. I mean, you know. I know some people that do that, which is unique. Um, but <laughs> the the reason, the, you know, the thing is, this is a, a network connected wireless product. Um, you don't you don't go turn on and off your printer or your TV or uh, your you know other things that are on your network. Well, you turn you off want your them TV. to always be available, ready to. Well, you you put your TV to sleep, but actually. Well, the it's printer's a good control. example. The printer's there waiting for, for you to do something. But if you're not right. doing something, it's in a standby mode. It's not consuming power. It's not getting older or wearing itself out. And these are the kinds of things that people right. were asking us. Um, so, you know, I guess I'm, at, I'm sort of saying you're sort of reassuring us that the standby mode is essentially turned off, but it's lurking there on Wi-Fi in case you want to use it. <laughs> It is and it's a, yes. I think it's also worth mentioning that, you know, with the sound base specifically or the speakers, if you have them connected to a TV and you love to watch your movies in the dark, you can dim and, and control the display so there's no light being emitted. Um, so, you know, what you guys are talking about is more of a sleep mode or, uh, you know, uh, like you were saying, standby. But you can also create that, you know, just completely looks like it's off so you can have that you know cinematic experience where there's no uh display light being shown and uh and that's another feature that was added uh to that that rich metadata on the front screen it can actually be dimmed or, or shut off completely um which is important i think for a lot of people who who do like that immersive experience glad that we've done this full-on infomercial which we didn't <laughs> we've never done and the only reason we're this is our first major product launch in more than 18 months and we're just super excited about it so sorry if we've overindulged ourselves on this. Hopefully you guys, you're, you're our, our gang anyway, the people on this pot, on the, what do we call Is it a podcast? What is it? Um, people on this are, are our gang. So hopefully you share our excitement, but um, we didn't intend to do an infomercial. We're just very stoked and hope, hope you are as well. I think we should do our last giveaway. It's our we have our last podcast. giveaway and then we'll tease our next happy hour. The final is a big one. This is a prime wireless Pro Sound Base 2.1 system with a pair of Prime bookshelf speakers, an SB1000 Pro subwoofer, uh, and all the sound path cables you need to connect it all. And the winner of that killer 2.1 system is Joe Ciccinelli. Joe Ciccinelli. Nice. You got your awesome system. Uh, so next 
Audiophile Happy Hour will be Thursday, November 16th at 6 p.m., as we always do. We'll be in our homes. Maybe I'll be in my home theater, I hope. Uh, but we'll be tuning in I then. I might be on a train. Oh, there you go. So That's uh, my 20th we... wedding anniversary, too. But I have plans oh, that weekend. Should... Should bring your wife on. Maybe we should bring all. Well, you'll be traveling, so uh, I don't know how much she'd love that for an anniversary present. But hey, we'll that weekend. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can wish her happy anniversary at the very least. But tune in Thursday, November seventh. Thank you for uh, letting us uh, tell you all no, about not, Prime. Not November seventh. November November seventeenth. Yep. Uh, just to be clear, all the details about these products are on our site. Our uh, customer service sound expert support team standing by to any, answer any technical questions you have. Uh, so feel free to do some research and reach out uh, as needed. But thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Happy listening, as always. And we'll catch up with you in a couple of weeks.